Uh, start the camera rolling, even though it's already been rolling. Yeah, clap for the audio. Uh, right, so we're here at Deutschland Tour, Tour of Germany, depending on your language. Deutschland Little Tour. Deutschland Little Tour. I'm joined by uh, our guest. My guest today is someone from the team that has made bike racing look very easy the last few days, Little Trek. He, if you've seen him on your screens, I'm sure in the classics so far this year, second in Strada Bianchi this year, and yeah, every race he's getting a lot of TV time and a lot of good results as well. He is everyone's favorite Latvian, Tom Scoinch. Welcome to Train Like a Monk. Thanks, man. Okay, so uh, where are we right now? Germany, somewhere. No yeah, idea. Some, somewhere in Germany. South. Yeah. Quite south. South side. Uh, Close to Switzerland and France. Yeah, we just finished stage two today, which was won by your teammate Mads Pedersen. You were quite active in that, in the, in the front of the race, as, as your team has been in every stage so far. The first question I usually ask is, what are you training for? Obviously, we're at a race right now. Uh, so I'll just change it up a bit. What did your training involve towards this race? How did you train for this race? Uh, well, I raced Olympics before. Um, so I had like two weeks pretty much in between. Yep. And it was actually just riding a bike. Yep. Like I, there's still a long way to go in the year. World is actually what I'm maybe training for. Yep. Um, yeah, and I still am racing until middle October or yep. late October because I'm doing Japan Cup. So, yeah, I needed to take it easy. Also, because I was in Latvia, training there is maybe not the easiest. Yep. Like, because it's all dead flat and if, it's, if there's no wind, it's hard to... So, how do you do How do you do your training there when it's pan flat? I'm sure plenty of people listening are living in flat areas. What's your go-to? I mean, if it's windy, it helps, but... Yep. Uh, Putting a 56 on helps. Point your bike into the headwind and <laughs> yeah, just Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the only way to do it because, yeah, to get, as soon as you start going with these fast bikes, you start going 400 plus watts, then you're just flying and yeah. running out of gears. Yeah. Unless you find some worse rolling roads or, yeah, headwinds. Yeah. And, yeah, so then coming into this one, so this was your first race since the Olympics then? Yeah. Yeah, and... We do, were you confident coming into this or more so just taking it easy and using this as preparation for the later ones? Yeah, I mean, definitely taking it a bit easy. I wasn't sure actually how it's gonna go just because, yeah, I mean, I did like zero intensity, not over-exaggerating, zero intensity between Olympics and now. Yep. Uh, so yeah, of course, the prologue was uh, a bit of a shock to the system. Yep. And then day one hit my PB heart rate in <laughs> 10 plus years. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, with the heat and freshness, the heart rate went sky high. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I knew I was here more in a support role. Yep. So I wasn't too worried that I might come in a bit fresh uh, yep. with, yeah, the, the eyes on the next ones more than yep. here. Well, the legs seem pretty good anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to keep today pretty short this week, so we're going to run to dinner soon, but I'll get into the usual run of questions. So, what is your favorite training session? Actually, just an endurance ride. Yep. Go out and explore, do some tempo along the way as you feel. Yep. Because then it doesn't really matter where you're riding, you can always do it. You can do a big loop, yep. not worry how much climbing you get or a specific amount of climbing whatever you can just so you like to be able to switch off yeah. not look at the the yeah. garment too much and That's just just ride yeah the best. what then is your least favorite training session probably sprint training sprint training yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan but does it does the sprint it. come naturally like do you do you no. have a good sprint or i mean actually my peak power is not bad yeah um because at the end of the race i've seen you win some sprints in some yeah groups, so. um and usually it's from a small group, so I need it to be a bit low speed yeah. because my punch is good. Yeah. But yeah, high speed sprints, not my thing. Yeah. So you're trying to avoid those sessions then yeah. or you are still getting... No, no, no. I actually do them quite a bit yeah, okay. <laughs> because I knew they were good for me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. My sprint sessions involve a lot of actually seated sprints. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sprinting for big bunchies. Yeah. 
it's more the seated power that I need with all the accelerations we do in all the one days and everything, everything. Yep. So uh, yeah, you don't want to be sprinting out of turns every single time, full, 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 but you need the acceleration. And then if you can do it in the saddle on someone's wheel, that's the best way to do it. Yep. Okay, what's your favorite loop? You're based in Jerome most of the time, I know, but it might be somewhere else, it might be somewhere where you've trained in the US or back home in Latvia. US, good, good one. I mean, now I live in Andorra, so there's yeah, okay. quite a bit, quite a bit of nice loops there. Uh, but it always needs to be four plus hours, unless then unless you do four plus hours, then you're just going yeah. up and down the same down road pretty much. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for sure it's not just me. But if you go to Girona and do the coastal loop, Costa Brava, it's, I mean, not many better roads along. Just yeah along the cliff seeing the ocean it's yeah it's a nice part of the world there it's good views always find a good coffee shop and to stop at and if it's the right time of year you don't get too much traffic either. yeah it's and i mean nice. yeah that's the thing like okay summertime yeah. it's not, not the best place to be but also summertime it's way too hot yeah yeah but if you're there like early spring where everywhere else is just miserable yep that's a great great place with a great ride nice okay so when you've got a session with efforts might be sprint training might be any other session do you like to get them done at the start or at the end or do you spread them throughout the ride yeah it depends on the session uh, i don't mind either way a lot of times i get it done especially if it's like vo2s i get it done early and just cruise along yep uh, but if you find some nice company and a loop yep uh, and the clients come in the end don't mind doing them in the end don't yep. really yeah, I'm nowadays not too fussed about it. Yeah, okay. So that <laughs> kind of ties in with the next question. When you've got the training plan, are you someone that sticks to it, regimented, you get it done exactly how it's prescribed, or do you change it up depending on the feelings or what's going on? Depends on the time of the year. Yep. Um, definitely times of the year where there's no deviation from it. Yep. Um, but... Is that yeah. like coming into certain races, like the Tour, for example? Yeah, I mean... Classics? I think... Yeah, it's, it changes even, it changes the time of the year, but it changes also where you are in the fitness level. Yep. It changes on like, what's, how close is the next race? Like there's many variables because even if you're feeling great and you're coming into like a really big one day, yep. but you want extra freshness, maybe you skip the last one. Yeah, day, okay. you know? yeah, yeah. Because you know that you're fit, you don't, it's not gonna give you anything. Yeah but maybe you recover better, you yep. are more fresh versus, yeah, at the end of the year, like at the end of the year, I will be more likely to change the efforts a little bit, not necessarily skip them or whatever, but maybe change the duration, like yeah, okay. find a nice loop and the first one needs to be 20 minutes, but I find a loop with 25 minute climb, I do it all the way to the top and the yeah, next one yeah. maybe cut it shorter. Yeah. Okay, so when you are training, do you prefer to go solo or with a group? Not a group. Definitely. Not a group. Okay. Nah. I, but also not solo. I, the, the perfect number is two people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I prefer to, I really like going with somebody. Who's your favorite training partner then? Um, your teammate actually, Joey Roscoff. Oh yeah? yeah. Joey's great for a chat. And um, he's never gonna half wheel you. So. Yeah, no, Joey's awesome. We did, especially, I mean, we were teammates as well. Yeah. Um, but then coming out of COVID when they first opened up Spain to us riders, like you could ride wherever you wanted, we rode every day together. Yeah. It's great. Like yeah. for a month, maybe more. No, I like that. When you've got a partner that works with, you ride at the same intensity yeah. in between the efforts. You're not getting half wheeled, you're not waiting for someone. But when it, once you go over four people, it just gets too messy. Yeah. yeah. Like, you can't decide where you're gonna go. Someone gets a puncture, then someone else gets a puncture. Like, yeah. it always seems to happen in training camps groups. as well. Do you prefer to keep it in really small groups then? Yeah, training camps are a bit different. I go in with a different perspective on training camp. Yeah. It's more, it's not necessarily, especially December camp, not necessarily about the training groups. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more, more actually yeah. bonding as a group. Yeah. yeah. Okay, when you are training, if you're not training with Joey then, or not training with a partner, are you a music or podcast while you're training? If I do listen to something, it's probably podcasts. Yeah, okay. But um, at the same time, I, I like also not listening to anything. 
Yeah, okay. Ah, interesting. So yeah. you're just listening to the, the birds out yeah, there? Yeah, just door. looking around, seeing, hearing the cars coming as well. That means you've always got a bike that's working very well then. Cause... Yeah, yeah. I mean, at times you, I might come out with a clicky something, but yes. it doesn't happen often. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, if it's raining or snowing, in your case in Andorra, are you someone that jumps on the trainer or do you just go out in all weather and get it done? I mean, if it's real snowing, no, yeah, <laughs> I just you just can't. can't. But uh, no, I don't mind the rain. Actually, some of the best rides that I have have been in the rain, just like yeah, nobody okay. else on the road. Like, especially in Girona when it's raining, but, yeah. like, but like not cold. Yeah. Fucking love it. Yeah, I love okay. the rain. I love rain. Just love feeling like a hard man while you're out. No, I mean, it, it's not nothing about hard. It's just, I don't know. The clouds are low. It's a bit murky. Like, you see nobody else. Not even cars go yeah. out, you know? It is quite peaceful. When, it's super, when super nice. I love the fresh air. I hate when it's hot. Yeah, okay. Like, as long as it's not cold, rain or so shine. So you're doing the matter. rain dance for Sunday, then there's a chance of rain here. I mean here, but is it at, the, at where we actually race? I don't know. I yeah. haven't looked that far. No, it's, a, it's a one day at a time job. Uh, okay, so when you are out on a ride, are you stops or no stops? Yeah, it depends on the ride. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't mind a stop. Uh, but also, yeah, especially the last two weeks, actually, it was no stop because uh, I was on baby duty most of the time yeah, okay. so i was like yeah in and out that's probably changed your perspective on that then yeah for sure for sure that. yeah used to stop definitely more but now it's like i'm happy to go home and help out or yeah. just be home to be home yeah no, that's good uh next one favorite food when you're training Ooh, on the ride yeah during the ride yep Whew. uh I do make some sweet potato bread occasionally on rides. That's oh, yeah. pretty good. You do a bit of pre-prep for it? Yeah, I mean, quite easy. Especially if you are baking some sweet potatoes anyways. Then, yeah. I mean, it takes no effort. To... You are known as the potato man, so everyone yeah. would be, be happy to hear that, <laughs> that you are eating potatoes on the ride as well. And then if we go, what's your go-to before the ride and after the ride then? Like your, your breakfast, standard training ride, four hours with some efforts. What's your breakfast? Yeah, like? uh, probably millet. Uh, porridge. Ah, okay. Yep. Oats or millet. Yep. Millet if it's a harder session. Oats maybe if it's a more relaxed yeah, session. Okay. And what's the theory behind millet? You like the taste better or? Anything? Less fiber. Yeah. Okay. Different kind of grain. Mix yeah. it up. Not always just do oatmeal. Never tried, it, but it's interesting because there's been such a shift away from the, the standard oats as porridge because of how much fiber there yeah. is. And but that's to... that's what I mean. Like if it's an endurance ride, don't yeah. mind it at all. Yeah. And then after you get in the door and you. You cooked after a hard session, what's your go-to? Uh, well, if there's leftover rice, that's always a good one. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it's usually just leftovers from dinner. From yeah, okay. Before. Yeah. It's not, because I can't I can be bothered cooking three, three meals a day. Um, yeah. So um, it's always cook enough dinner that there's leftovers the next day and then just deal with, the, the, deal with I that. I cop a lot of flack from my other half on how much food I cook when I cook dinner, but it's just no. so that I've got it ready. Yeah, ready exactly. I mean, especially you come home and then it takes you another 40 minutes to cook it. Yep. Forget it. No yep. time for that. Okay, so speaking of food, are you ever one to go on any low carb rides or any fasted rides or are you always well fueled? Not anymore. Yeah. Uh, I remember to... a while ago, uh, when I was right, this would have when we were on the same team. Well, I was a stagiaring for the team, which is interesting. Now I'm rooming with a stagiaire here, but uh, the you were right into the fasting then, and you did a pretty yeah, long did. fast at one point. I mean, I've fasted on water for a week. Yeah, once, but that was not in, during racing season. Yeah, but uh, yeah, then I used to do like five hour rides with pretty much protein only. Yeah, um, I do think it helped me, if I'm honest. Okay. Uh, especially the first years when you're missing that endurance. Yeah. yeah. I think it helped me with the like longer days, but at the same time now nowadays like your fueling in the race is so much different. Yeah. Like I, I mean I always used to eat a lot, but I don't think anyone used to eat that much like we do now. Yeah. Yeah. It is completely changed. Uh, okay. Off the bike, is there any cross training that you do? Yeah. Uh, it depends on the year where I am, but uh, it can be anything. One year I did like two months of ice hockey oh yeah yeah like three three two cool. three times a week uh same with like and the team was 
chill with that. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah, okay. Or was that just a don't tell them and yeah. they don't know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, more of more the la <laughs> latter, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of stuff written into our contract that uh, we can't do now after too many off-bike injuries. But yeah, I don't yeah. know if that's one of them. Um, schemo, do that a bit when, yep. the, when the snow is good and indoor especially. Yep. Um, running, gym. Yeah, I definitely maybe cross train more than others. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, and you just like because cross country skiing as well. One one year I did just roller skiing for like six weeks because there was no snow. I just roller skied. Yeah, nice. One yeah. year I broke my collarbone. Did roller blading. Yeah, I guess for I like six weeks as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I did the same thing uh, a lot. I did the same thing a lot in Nice. I got told, uh, yeah, I was out out myself and then got told I can't ride for this certain amount of time. So I just grabbed the skates out and yeah. then it was yeah. That's great. Using that, yeah, I think it's good when you can't ride then because of injuries or maybe it's the off season or whatever. If you've got those cross training options that aren't completely out of the blue, where you're going to go out and do something you've yeah. never done before and injure yourself. Like, yeah, for sure. If it's something that you can do a little bit throughout yeah. the season, and then yeah, then it just gives you that option. Yeah. Okay, we'll go into the rapid fire. So this is a rapid fire. Would you rather? So ideally, just pick one or the other. But yeah, if you've got some some extra stuff. Uh, we can go into that as well, but okay. First one, aero or lightweight? Aero. Disc brake or rim brake? Disc. Tubeless or clincher tire? Clincher. Saddlebag or frame bag? Both. Both. You, <laughs> Especially you in Andorra. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, need you, need, you need the clothes. I like. I like to not have. And it shit in my pockets. I just put the food in the yeah. bar bag and it's great. We've seen that theory. I just don't like having too many bags on my bike, but yeah. No, I don't mind. Yeah. Uh, next, socks over or under leg warmers? Under. Uh, gloves or no gloves? If if necessary, gloves. Okay. In training, no gloves. Today, we use using gloves? Yeah. And they're like, you, so you use them most races or? Uh, yeah, most races. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, heat or altitude training? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no you, live, you live in a hot and high place. Yeah, I know. At altitude, <laughs> especially. Uh, yeah, I do both, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, if I had to pick one, I would probably pick altitude just because of the mountains. It's yeah. quite nice. Do you prefer town sign sprints or KOM hunting? Town sign's shorter, pain, less painful. Yeah, okay. Get beat, and no, get over it. <laughs> Uh, early morning rides or pro hours? What times you you roll out? Yeah, not early morning. Yeah, no, not early morning. Even since, did you shift forward since having a kid or? Uh, not really, actually. Yeah. Okay. It's actually more I will leave later now. I leave yeah, like okay. 11, 12 sometimes. Yeah. Because then, especially on a weekend, because you can hang out with the family in the morning. Yeah. And then, yeah, go out have breakfast maybe get a coffee and in indoor as well you let it warm up in, in yeah. the winter time yeah and then go out later yep do you prefer when you've got a rico day do you do an easy spin or do you prefer a day off day off and do you, you usually do something else i guess on those days and yes. across <laughs> yeah. uh pasta or rice rice sweet or savory savory uh would you prefer to ride with a half wheeler or a wheel sucker Sit yeah, <laughs> sitting on you the whole day. Sure. <laughs> uh, squeaky disc brake or creaky bottom bracket? Disc. Disc brake. And would you prefer an epic hunger flat or severe dehydration? Hunger flat, for sure. Yeah. Dehydration can be Yeah, okay. All right, uh, we'll go to the last question. What is the best piece of advice you have? Um, probably for cyclists, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, ideally cycling related, yeah. but it can be something different. Well, actually, it doesn't matter if it's cycling related or not. It would be to invest in yourself. Yep. Um, if there's one thing I've never counted money on in my career is investments in me. Yep. Be that my first power meter, be that training camps, be that nutritionist, nutrition. Yep. Um, yeah, I end, ended up spending for sure more money than most just buying shit that I knew would make me yeah. better. Yeah, no, that's a really good, I had, my accountant actually gave me that piece of advice. I remember the first time I was actually able to save any money and I went to him and said, okay, what should I do with my money? Like, where should I invest it? What's, what's your tips? And he said, 
just invested in yourself. You're not earning that much money that it really matters down the line, like invest that in yourself, move forward in your career. That's interesting coming from you because you're not someone that had this meteoric rise through the ranks. Like you were working your way time. up there. Yeah, yeah, Took and time. you don't see that much anymore, uh, which yeah, is a little bit heartbreaking seeing these kids just come in and be amazingly good straight away. But yeah, you, you didn't step straight into a world tour team. And also even when you were on a world tour team, it wasn't like you were suddenly the first person getting ridden for in every race and then yeah it's it's been that steady progression over time most definitely not i remember the first training camp with uh cannondale at the time yeah that uh, we did like this uh, 20 minute power test on a climb and i got passed by the classics climbers uh classics guys classic climbers classics guys on the climb yeah. and the climbers did more watts in the 20 minutes not more watts per kilo but just more watts yeah. i was like what the hell am i doing here? <laughs> yeah but uh yeah i think especially the way the sport's been in the past and especially being on smaller teams even before that uh that investment in yourself is so crucial and i guess now you're in an outfit where a, a team where there's a big investment in you from externally as well but i think that's great advice for most people don't have that and you hear plenty of stories now of yeah to get there you're worthwhile investing in yourself before others decide to. And I mean, even on a big team, even when everything's provided, there's still details that you can improve yourself. I don't know, whatever. Even when racing with the national team or whatever, like there's yeah. always something where you end up spending money. Like for example, our team, we have coaches on the team, yep. but they don't require to have an internal coach. Okay. And actually I have an external coach. Uh, it's interesting, most teams is, yeah, yeah requirement for the uh internal one but yeah. that's interesting and yeah i mean it cost me money but yeah but the investment seems to be paying yeah. off anyway yeah. all right we're gonna head to dinner uh thanks very much for Pleasure. coming on hope everyone enjoyed it and uh yeah i'll see you out on the road tomorrow hopefully we can <laughs> we can stay a bit closer to you this time and uh give you a run for your money <laughs> let's hope so cool thank you my pleasure